everybody and welcome uh, to hicks token chat your chat did i say chat? channel channel man welcome to hicks token channel Woo, your host superman in the house yeah 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 hey we've got uh hey streaming elements bot is running okay cool uh so uh that's coming up so hope you guys like that now uh i'm uh probably moving from uh stream yard for most of my live streams uh coming up probably moving to obs so uh stay tuned for that it's a little bit more work to do on my side, uh, but hopefully uh, it's going to bring up, uh, we're just uh, upgrading the show. That's what's going to happen. Uh, so hopefully you're going to enjoy that. But let's get into it, folks. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell for future videos. And of course, if you're watching this after the live stream, uh, hit the comments. I will respond to all of those. And of course, if you haven't joined our Discord, hit the link in the video description. Uh, you can join our Discord for good information, good community. Uh, and of course, uh, what else? Uh, your join button if you want to support the channel hit the join button we've got pulse skins hex skins and richard art club three cool ways of supporting us as we cover hex and pulse chain and pulse hex and send token richard Hart, and much much more uh and uh, have a lot of fun so uh, i think that's pretty much it is that it i think so well let's get into it folks we're going to talk about the stock market of course the fed reserve and we're going to talk about crypto and of course the hex ecosystem we're going to talk about a few other projects pulse chain airdrops and things like that so stay tuned uh, for all that, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, of course, we end up with the Hex a daily stats. So if you're staked Hex, uh, you're going to find out more about that. So uh, pretty cool. Uh, what's the number, or number one thing about this channel? Consistency. We try to be absolutely consistent. Um, so hopefully that's a good good thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, I like it. Uh, my key number word, my main word, consistency. Uh, life's beneath the house is in the house there. So uh, how are you? Very good. And, of course, always brings the ultimate strategy. Hex, uh, hey all, Hex, E-Hex, PLS, and PLSX for the win, 100%. And that is awesome strategy and the maxi strategy of this channel. We've got Living on Crypto. Yo, LBTT going all in on Hedron and PLSB now. So I'm not sure what LBTT means. You might have to let me know what that means. Um, but uh, someone's going all in on Hedron and PLSB. Cool. We're going to be talking about both of those during this live stream. So that's cool. Uh, G'day all says Living on Crypto. Uh, one day closer to V3. Yeah, we're one day closer to Pulse Chain Testnet V3. And AP says, Happy Thanksgiving, Superman. Happy Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. I forgot what day that is because it's American uh, celebration. So I'll have to go and check that out after the live show unless someone tells me in the chat there. Uh, Wookiees in the house. One day closer to more uh, infection, the bottom and the launch of Pulse. Uh, more infection. I'm not sure what that means. What is that? Uh, the bottom and, and launch of Pulse chain. Yeah, that's true. Uh, not quite sure that's what you meant to say. Anyway, what time is it? It is hex second time. It is indeed. And we've got Ted Nelson as well. Hello, everybody. Good to see Ted Nelson. And uh, what else? We've got Bloodfish King in there. Shano. Good to see Shano as well. Uh, Woohoo! Hey, Shano. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we've got, uh, who else there? Rango. Good morning, all. Good morning to Rango. Kato Naturals in the house as well. Kato Natural. Let me say that correctly. Hey, hey, hey. Superman. Uh, good to see you, Kato, as always. Uh, Brian, our community lead, uh, one of our two community leads, is in the chat there with the Discord, Discord link if you want to join. Uh, we're over a thousand uh, members now. Really good, good Discord. And of course, we're looking to do lots of things on there. So get in there, folks, and get part of the community. Um, who else is in the house there? HH, LBTT, lies beneath the truth. Okay, cool. All right. So that makes a lot of sense to me. That makes a lot of sense. I, I wasn't quite getting it. Sorry about that. Uh, cool, cool. Lies beneath the truth, which is the first comment I read out. Uh, Tortoise Johnny in the house with the ducks. Hex Hoddle in the house. Hey, good to see Hex Hoddle. Uh, always uh, always appreciate Hex Hoddle's alpha in the chat there. So great to see Hex Hoddle in there. Uh, and Wookie as well. Fat fingers super. Yeah, fat fingers for sure. All right, so cool. Um, let's get into it, folks. Uh, we've got the uh, the news for the stock market and, of course, the Fed. So let's get into it. Uh, we're going to get into the title here. Stock market today. Dow ends higher as Fed minutes uh, show end of jumbo hike soon, which is great. Isn't that great? Uh, it's positive anyway. It's not a certainty, but it's positive. And of course, uh, we yesterday we had a nice green day, right? I think Monday was red uh, on the stock market. We had a green day yesterday, which is quite nice. And we've got another green day today. And that's very, very cool. Uh, this is kind of better than expected. So while I still expect November, maybe early December to still be quite bearish, particularly for crypto, uh, we're trying to find that bottom in crypto. Uh, it's nice to see the market holding up uh, against the higher interest rates at this stage as we move from cheap money into more expensive money. Uh, so just how high they will go will be important. So we're going to talk all about that in the live stream. Uh, let's get into it. We've got the Dow Jones, the top 30 industrials in the United States. Uh, that is uh, up uh, three-tenths of a percent, 96 points. 
to 34,194. And really, we're not that far below the all-time high that we had uh, in this boom market. So let's actually go back a year. I think a year might be enough, maybe not quite. Let's go five, back five years. We can get back all the way back to uh, the 26th of December. And, of course, the end of last year. And we had the peak up there at 4,000. Um, sorry, that's the S&P. Let me go to Dow Jones. Uh, the Dow Jones, we had a peak up around 36,388. So we're not that far below that at 34,194, which is pretty incredible considering that we've got these interest rates going up like this. We've got inflation and lots of other stuff. Now, I do think that we're going to next year, we're going to see the stock market pull back uh, a lot. But at the moment, we're getting a nice little pivot in interest rates. So uh, let's see how that goes. Now, uh, uh, let's say we've got the S&P 500 is up six tenths of a percent up to 23 points and, of course, up to 4,227. The NASDAQ, with all the tech companies in it, is up almost 1%, 111 points uh, to 11,285. And, of course, on the five-year chart, we can see that also back in, what, a bit earlier, actually, in November uh, last year, uh, 16,057. So we're still quite a bit down uh, for the NASDAQ, but not the Dow Jones. Uh, so uh, the NASDAQ's definitely down a lot from that 16,000. Uh, and uh, definitely been uh, selling off down here as we go. So uh, that's kind of interesting there. So Nasdaq's pulled back quite decent from that point of view, and that's probably get a bit more comfort around the Nasdaq uh, going down further. Uh, so that's kind of cool. We've got the dollar down 1%, uh, and of course down 1.106. Now, obviously, uh, with the news of the Fed and things like that, uh, that uh, makes the dollar go down. And of course, that's actually bullish for commodities, right? Uh, particularly gold and silver and things like that. So let's jump over to the commodities. We've got uh, uh, the Brent oil uh, down $3.65 uh, and 4%. And, of course, we had the OPEC uh, indication of cutting again. Uh, but, of course, uh, there's been a bit of, I think, Russia's played into that. So $84.71, managed to pull that down. Uh, crude oil there, uh, $3.59 is uh, down 4.4%, 4, 4 down to $77. Some pretty big falls, actually, uh, in, that, uh, in the Brent and uh, West Texas there. Now we've got gold is up uh, 70 cents to $1,751. Uh, silver is uh, slightly flat here, $21.60. Uh, that hasn't really moved despite the dollar there. So uh, we'll keep a, a lookout on these two here. Uh, that's pretty much it for the commodities. Let's get into the commentary. Uh, the Dow closed higher Wednesday as the Federal Reserve and November uh, meeting minutes showed support for slowing of rate hikes soon at a time when data continue to point the slowing economy. So that's really good, folks. Uh, this is better news than, than, than it keeps, you know, being even more aggressive. But how high are they going to go if we're going to find out? So a substantial a substantial majority of participants judged that a slowing in the pace of increase would likely soon be appropriate, the Fed minutes showed. That's really good, man, honestly. Uh, if you're looking at your crypto portfolio, your stock market portfolio, that's good news, I think, generally speaking. Not to say that I don't think we've found the bottom in the crypto market yet. All right, so cool. The further, the further hint at a slowing pace of rates affirmed uh, investor expectations that the central bank is likely to slow hikes to 50 basis points at its December meeting, uh, which would be a much better pivot. And of course, I've got a poll on at the moment about this, so we can get into that. Uh, will the Fed uh, pivot in December 2022, uh, drop to 50 basis points? So that's really about this point here. Uh, yes, crypto bottom still coming, though. Uh, yes, crypto bottom is in. Yay. Uh, no uh, pivot uh, February 23. Uh, crypto pain will still uh, be around. Uh, and of course, uh, no pivot February 23, crypto will rise then. So uh, that's kind of where we're, we're there. I'm not sure there's too much difference between those last two, uh, but uh, you kind of get my point. I think uh, what I'm saying with the third one is that there uh, will have, even if it pivots in February, uh, we'll have we'll continue to have crypto pain uh, as opposed to crypto rise in the fourth one there. So uh, get in there. We've got 26 votes. Uh, get in and vote there, folks. Right, so cool. Uh, we continue to expect the Fed to hike that by 50 basis points in December, uh, but then by only for 25 basis points in January. No further hikes after that. Now, that is surprising to me. Um, so uh, I could reasonably expect to see another 25 after that. But, man, that would be bullish if we only had 50 basis points in 25. That would get us up to 4.75% on the federal funds rate. Not That's not even close to 525 uh, on the 1st of December, we've got the PCE number coming in, remember, for inflation. That's really what the Fed's uh, tracking uh, towards at 2%. So if that's, if that's less than 5.1% for October, uh, and of course, I do imagine it's probably going to come back like the uh, uh, the CPI number did uh, for October. Remember, it came down from 8.1 down to 7.7, .7, which was quite a decent move down. Uh, then that would be really, really bullish. 
Um, so cool. Uh, the bets on a slower rate of uh, pace of rate hikes come in the wake uh, wake of data Wednesday showing weaker than expected housing, uh, manufacturing, and services activity. So we've got some of this stuff pulling back, which is kind of cool, and that means that they've got less less reason to move the rates up so much uh, when economic activity is starting to fall. Treasury yield slipped further into the red following the minutes, paving the way for growth sectors of the market, including consumer discretionary and tech to add uh, to earlier day gains. So it's pretty cool there. Alphabet, uh, Microsoft led the gains from big tech, rising more than 1%. Apple rose less than 1%, even as iPhone supply worries continue to linger uh, amid C19 lockdowns in China-based supply. Uh, Fox, Foxconn. Um, so cool. Despite the supply worries, Apple is seeing strong iPhone upgrade activity from AT&T AT &T and Verizon. And of course, in-store activity has been solid. Um, so that's kind of cool. Consumer stocks, meanwhile, were led by uh, led, led higher by more than 7% rise in Tesla. Uh, the city Citigroup upgraded the stock to neutral from sell, uh, signing a more balanced valuation following the recent pullback. The, on the, the earnings front, meanwhile, delivered mixed quarterly results. So this, this, this earnings front here, mixed quarterly results, I'm expecting that to be to get worse next year uh, with the recession deepening, uh, especially that will also depend on how high the federal funds rates go, what we call that terminal rate um, as well. So this is where this is going to start hitting the stock market. Not so important for crypto though, right? We don't have, typically speaking, uh, we don't have uh, earnings reports coming in. Uh, so we're a little bit different from there. It's a key, key differentiation uh, from stock markets. All right, so cool energy stocks uh, struggled to join in uh, on the rally as falling oil prices weighed in on investments, investor sentiment amid data showing a larger than expected drop in weekly U.S. crude stockpiles and reports that G7 nations are weighing up a price cap on Russian oil in a range of $65 to $70 per barrel. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. So that's pretty much the stock market. Let's get into a bit more detail around the Fed rate, though. Hike, though. Uh, a majority of Fed Federal Reserve policymakers were in support of slowing the pace of interest rate hikes soon uh, to assess the lag impact of monetary policy, policy tightening on the economy and inflation. A substantial majority of participants judged that a slowing that a slowing in the pace of increase would likely soon be appropriate, the Fed minute showed. The certain lags and magnitudes associated with the effects of monetary policy actions on economic activity and inflation were among the reasons cited uh, regarding why such an assessment was important. At the conclusion of the previous meeting on the November the second, the Federal Open, the Fe, uh, sorry, Federal Open Market Committee or the OMC uh, raised its benchmark rate by 75 basis points to uh, 3.75 to 4 percent, uh, and that was how high it is at the moment. It was the fourth straight uh, 75 basis point uh, hike in many meetings, but the Fed also laid out the carpet for showing uh, the pace of rate hikes at upcoming meetings, flagging several factors including the cumulative tightening of the monetary policy, in other words, being up at 4% now, uh, the lagged uh, impact of monetary policy on the um, economy and, and inflation, something that can take ages sometimes, uh, you know, three, six, nine months. Uh, that would determine the size of future rate hikes. In the wake of uh, recent data pointing to slowing, but uh, still above trend inflation, several members have continued to echo, echo market expectations for less hawkish rate hikes. And that's kind of the key conclusion there. However, uh, there were some Fed members, and we've been reading about this the last week or two, uh, however, that are much more hawkish. And of course, uh, however, prefer to hold uh, hold of slowing hikes until the stance, uh, we prefer to hold of slowing hikes until the stance of policy was more clearly uh, in restrictive territory and there were uh, more concrete signs that inflation pressures uh, were receding significantly, according to the statement. And those are the people that we're worried about. They're the ones that might want to go for 75 basis points and keep raking, uh, putting, pushing hikes up uh, up to like 7%, 7 or something like that. These are the more awkward ones. And that's kind of the old classic school of thought as well around uh, Fed rate hikes uh, dealing with inflation. About 80% of traders expect the Federal Reserve to slow uh, the pace of rate hikes to uh, 50 basis points in December, according to investing.com's Red uh, Fed Rate Hike Monitor. And let's see what that is at the moment in real time. Uh, so that says 80 percent that is sitting at 75.8 uh, percent now so it's dropped about four percentage points uh, and of course uh, a 75 basis point is actually uh, one in four people are expecting that so uh, let's hopefully that the market calls this one right they've been wrong several times so let's hopefully they call that one right this time uh, hopefully the meetings the minute meetings are enough to substantiate that uh, participants uh, commented uh, commented that there was significant uncertainty about the ultimate level of the federal funds rate uh, needed to achieve the committee's goals 
and that the assessment of that level would depend uh, and the minutes showed. So obviously, uh, let's see how things go with the, particularly the PCE inflation as well coming up on the 1st of December. Traders are currently expecting rates to peak at 5% to 5.25%, uh, which is what I've been saying on this channel. I couldn't, and uh, that's high enough, right? That's kind of, that's still a fair amount of pain because uh, you've got to remember the retail rates are even on top of that, right? So that's really uh, what's going to smash people. So what are we at? Uh, 4% now. What are retail rates? Uh, 4.685 to 7 7 something maybe in the US. Uh, let me know in the chat if you've got one of those those mortgages. And of course, uh, imagine going adding another 100 basis points, 1.75. That would get you to what, 7 to 8, uh, maybe just over 8% in some cases uh, in the interest rate. So it really starts to pain people, particularly all those marginal people that are only struggling to pay at the moment. They've also got inflation everywhere else. Uh, they've still got inflation, you know, they're, they're targeting inflation. They've still got uh, inflation there. Uh, households really bear the brunt uh, of these measures, don't they? Uh, and of course, uh, you know what? Uh, a lot of the uh, the administration that caused a lot of this inflation for here also moved very late on inflation. Uh, they're the ones that they, they get away with a blue murder, don't they? they? Seem to get away with it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right. So cool. Uh, yeah. Even if rates do peak around five percent, that would still be the highest rates uh, seen since June two thousand and six. So this is a non-trivial event. As I say, we've had super cheap money. And of course, we've had an uh, uh, increase in the M2 monetary supply. So we've had a very uh, bullish time and of course, multiple bubbles in the in the ecosystem as well. So uh, we'll see how that uh, goes at the moment. We're obviously easing off a bit. That's going to be quite good. So you nearly need to keep this in your frame of mind uh, when you're investing at the moment. Yet even if rates do peak around 5%, that would still be the highest rate since June 2006. It may prove painful for risk assets uh, with growth sectors of the market, including tech, particularly vulnerable and of course we've seen a lot of cracks in the tech companies you know laying off people uh, being too fat uh, silly cultures as well you know this woke culture and of course uh, doing silly things like that over uh, I think uh, Elon Musk just got a Twitter and one of the first teams he got rid of was the, uh, um, the you know the so-called um, what do they call themselves uh, inclusive and diversity or something like that you know those kind of groups that just a waste of money and of course uh, they're the ones that got got, got rid of first or at least they walked out first, didn't they? Uh, if they stop at 5 to 6% interest rates, that's uh, pretty high, certainly, certainly compared with what uh, we've seen over the 10 to 60 years. Imagine getting a federal fund rate at 6%. That won't be good for markets, folks. Uh, of course, the real economy and, of course, the financial markets. Uh, so hopefully we stay on this low end of 5%. That'd be very cool. At the moment, of course, if these people are talking about 50 basis points, 25. I just don't see that, man. I just don't see it. Uh, I think maybe the minimum will be 5%, which means, you know, maybe 50, 25 in February, 25 in March, uh, maybe something like that. We'll see. Uh, seen with over 20, 10 to 20 years, certainly compared with, uh, we've seen the 10 to 20 years. Managing Director of Applied Crypto Research. Uh, what else here? For equities, the focus will not be when they, they stop and stabilize, but really when they start to come down. So that's a very good insight there. So not when they stop and stabilize, but where, really when they start to come down. Um, so that's the other side of it. So they obviously they get them up. Let's say they get them up to 4.75% on the federal funds rate. Uh, how long do they hold them up there? That's a lot of pain. People make paying much higher interest rates. Uh, co corporate firms are paying high interest rates. Government uh, paying higher interest rates. How long does that last for? That's the next question. So uh, uh, so we've had the first one, how the rate of, of increases, and then the, uh, the height of that, the absolute height of that rate, and then how long they have that rate. Those are the three different things. And I think we're getting the first part of that answered. Uh, and it uh, looks like that's going to ease back. But how long are these going to be around for? And of course, if they start to come down, that's a signal for the market uh, that they can really rally. Uh, so this is one key part of it, of course, the cost of capital. Uh, the other one, of course, is the amount of money flushing around. And of course, we see that the Fed's actually helped to reduce the M2 money supply uh, about 1% so far, I think is the number. Uh, so we'll probably bring that chart up uh, maybe tomorrow or something. So cool. That is where we are at the stage. Uh, so we're going to jump out of there and uh, turn to crypto now. Uh, so crypto actually having a pretty good day in the office. Uh, 16,631. Uh, don't forget to get into the poll. We've got the poll there. Yes, crypto bottom still coming. Uh, yes, crypto bottom isn't in. Yay. And no, a pivot uh, Feb, uh, February 23. Crypto pain still uh, will still be around. Uh, no, a pivot uh, February 23. Crypto rise uh, at that stage, so uh, even if it's going to hold up at, the, at that rate, uh, that uh, uh, crypto might be able to, uh, you know, start to do that bull run. All right, so we've got BTC at sixteen thousand seven twenty nine, up to almost two point eight percent. 
We've got ETH at 11.84 at four up 4.5 percent. Still not over back over 1200 though. Uh, and of course, we've got BNB up at 298 dollars. Really good performing here at 12 percent. So uh, that's very cool. Uh, what else we got going? We've got uh, um, Crow there. Crow is uh, up uh, five percent at six point seven cents. Uh, we've got Matic uh, is uh, up one percent at eighty six cents. So not much move there on Matic. Uh, we've definitely got uh, Solana here making a nice, powerful move there, sixteen percent up to fourteen dollars thirty eight. It's a pretty good day in the office. And uh, what else there? We've got. I'm just going to look through some of those. I think some of those are the highlights there. Uh, USDC is slightly under peg at the moment. USD Tether is still slightly under peg as well. Uh, I think that's just have a look around uh, the scope there. Uh, Link looks like it's doing pretty well. Um, and Litecoin also has been a bit popular lately, up 13% to $79. Now, I'm just trying, trying to see where the Tron's there. Uh, I'm just trying to see where I can see Tron. Uh, there's Tron down here. Um, so 5.1 cents. So uh, pretty modest there. Those other markets at the moment are holding up, but is the hammer still about to fall? And we're going to get that crypto bottom. Now, remember, typically we'll see a, a BTC slam down and then the altcoins will slam and go even worse. And that's when we're going to find, hopefully get some bottom. I'm hoping that there's just one more leg down. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. And maybe it's that 14 to 12K and maybe it's that 11K and pray of Richard Hartz. We will see. So let's jump over to Al Capo, Al Capo of crypto. Yeah. All right, let's get to the fun stuff because we're in crypto now. Uh, stock market's kind of dry. Federal Reserve's kind of dry stuff. But uh, crypto, that's where all the action is, Jackson. All right, so cool. El Capto of Crypto, it's time. He's still with time here. Uh, so obviously, he can't get the exact date, but uh, he's still feeling that it's coming at this stage and so forth. So let's have a look uh, at his commentary. So 15 hours ago, what I see, bearish retests everywhere. Uh, hidden bearish divergences on several time frames. Bounces showing clear bull trap characteristics. Supply inc uh, coming in a lot and people euph euphoric that price with price at 16Ks uh, for BDC there. So people euphoric with price at 16Ks and it kind of feels like that, right? Uh, we just got a little bit of a reprieve here. This green, green table uh, makes you feel good and uh, you get a bit over overzealous there. Uh, but he's still calling 12 to 14K is a matter of time. And then, of course, this is the real hammer. So if you're new to crypto, this is typically what happens. BDC will drop. Uh, but uh, altcoins, uh, everything else will drop even more, uh, just like the opposite. When BTC goes up, uh, typically the altcoins will go up even more after that. And uh, that's kind of the trend there. So 40 to 50 percent drop on average for altcoins. He's still expecting that. So that is is a drop there. That's Al Kepo of Crypto. I'll post his uh, tweet there if you want to follow him. Uh, he's one of my favorite ones to follow. And of course, uh, let's uh, check that out. So cool. That is pretty much that on that one. Before we get into Hex, I'm going to catch up on the chat and see who's uh, jumped in here. I uh, don't want to get too far ahead of myself, as we say. Uh, it's always good to break things down. Uh, so cool. We're going to get into Hex next. So we've done uh, stock market, done Federal Reserve, and we've done crypto. Um, let's see how we go. Just trying to catch up. Where was I? Uh, got up to Wookie, that's for sure. Uh, Tortoise Johnny. It's now now. Tortoise Johnny. Uh Alpha, I'm, I'm a beta, says Hexotl. is a beta. Uh, I remember that. A Unimax, Unimax in house there. Hex token cannot uh, be sent an SEC letter since he's a, a, a rent. Uh, what? He's a rent in the US. I'm not sure what that means, Unimax. I'm not sure what that means. Hello, I'm not I'm not in the US. No, I'm not US. No, of course not. I'm in uh, New Zealand. Uh, J-Man says, hello, Superman. Hello, Hexkins. Good to see you, J-Man. And what else there? A, uh, what's it? Kira launch on ETH, says J-Man. Uh, what date is it now? 24th? The yeah, Kira's on ETH. I think we covered that a little while back. No, do that on the 11th or the 11th or something. I'll have to go double check on that, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, Hex going to uh, 0001, says L Mouse. Wow, uh, that's definitely lower. Than, that's the lowest prediction I've seen for Hex, uh, the L. Uh, I've seen uh, half a cent. I've seen uh, uh, seven tenths of a penny. I've seen one penny. Um, and uh, But yeah, let's see. Hey, I, don't, I still don't know whether Overwatch has still got uh, their limb orders. Uh, maybe Hex Hoddle will, might know. Um, that hit their limit orders for one cent because remember originally I think they were going to look to buy a lot at one cent so we'll see that it's not really been uh, uh, hasn't got there yet so uh, we'll see. Um, uh, fifty fifty says Al really fifty fifty man I wouldn't put a fifty fifty on that but a uh, pulse chain will make uh, make or break hex says Al uh, that's true I think that there's a quite a bit of the narrative of hex is tied to pulse chain at the moment. Um, J man says relief rally we still uh, training downwards says J man uh, yeah. Uh, the party is over, says Al. Boy, Al's being really negative today, Al. 
Um, Bitcoin to zero. Man, man, really? Bitcoin to zero? L, I think you're being pretty silly. Is, is L still in the chat there? Where is L? Um, oh, man, man, you're, I was just reading that through and I was going, is this, where's this? L's normally not that negative, but uh, L's coming in negative today. No Pulse Chain until next year, says J-Man. I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't see uh, Pulse Chain until next year there, J-Man. Um, so, yeah. Let me just uh, let me have, let's give a time out on there. Uh, there we are. All right, so cool. Oh, you, I, I, I'd like to beneath where he did it. That's funny, man. That is funny. All right, so cool. Uh, PDC to 11 cases, J-Man. I think that's definitely on the on the tables uh, and maybe 14 to 12. There's still more contagion coming out from this FDX as well. Um, so it's uh, pretty, pretty important there. Uh, Jim Rack Crypto's in house there. Listen to you at 6.30 p.m. Eastern is the best, says Jim Rack Crypto. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, I did see your tweet out there uh, saying that you're blocked by Richard Hart. That's unfortunate. I don't know. Yeah, just don't know why people do that. But, uh, you know, I feel for you. And, of course, uh, uh, good to see you in the chat as always. And keep up the great work. Um, I like freedom. You guys know that. I like freedom. Uh, and, of course, uh, we are a Hex Maxi channel. Uh, but we like to be free as well. And that's part of being on crypto is being free. So you guys know me. I'm pretty consistent on that. Uh, Kent, thanks for keeping it real. Happy Turkey Day. Yeah, happy Turkey Day. In fact, Thanksgiving to everybody uh, as around the world, not just the US, which was where it actually gets celebrated, but uh, definitely a big shout out. Uh, Hex Hoddle says BTC dominance uh, all-time low, says Hex Hoddle. Uh, question mark. People are realizing that BTC is over pumped for what it does. Nothing more. Well, I was watching, I was looking at Sailor uh, yesterday and he's more bullish than ever, Hex Hoddle. He's more bullish than ever. Uh, is a sailor, and uh, uh, he was talking about uh, a fact that uh, his uh, Bitcoin is still up against all the other asset classes uh, since he uh, did a lot of his buying, like gold and silver, like that. So he's still very bullish. Uh, so uh, yeah, he's just nothing but bullish, bullish, bullish on his, his uh, Twitter. I went through a lot of his updates. So uh, if you guys haven't checked out Sailor, go check it out because uh, he's super bullish. Um, I think it's a little bit over bullish, but uh, particularly at the moment, but he's definitely bullish on that one. Now I think he, I think Bitcoin's going to do well. Uh, I think a lot of the same tra traits of Bitcoin is going to be do, do well. But, hey, I think Hex is better with a proof of work change. I think that's much better for the average person. Uh, and, of course, uh, much more easier to get into as well uh, in terms of price. So uh, very cool. Um, what else there? We've got Big Kahuna house in the house as well with the emojis looking good. Uh, and Hex Otter says trading view shows BTC dominance at 40% and lowest at 39, says Hex Otter. Uh, the floor tile, what's it? The floor tile showing 37 Cool. Um, uh, Hexodus says BDC dominance in January 2018 uh, dipped under 36%. So, yeah, we're getting pretty close to that for sure. Uh, getting pretty close. Uh, screen record that Hexodus is a, bit, a beta for memes. That's true. I agree with that. Um, what else there? Clash of Ideas. Best stream to get home to is Clash of Ideas. Hey, nice one. Appreciate that. Big shout out. Hey, we've got 55 people watching at the moment. 55, 55. That's pretty cool. Um, what else there? Uh, KB season how's that holy superman crypto bottom still not in I'm only 99% sure that BDC bottom is in uh, might have double bottoms at 10 to 13k in October 2023 uh, 10 to 13 uh, hey that might not be too wrong there uh, KBC and uh, that might not the recession's coming next year um, so that may not be too wrong I would suggest uh, Tom Bo says I'll be happy if my limit orders trigger at a uh, quarter of a penny and uh, two, uh, two cents for hex is Tom Bo's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Hex Hoddle picked up something. Didn't you pick up something for 1.8 cents the other day with that uh, whale? And uh, that dumped us down to 2.29. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, one cent would be awesome. Help the newbies rack up some T-shares. Boy, would it. So T-shares have been going down. We're going to talk about that later in the live stream. Uh, but it's been one of the bullish signs. Uh, now, we want, obviously, the community to grow, but the T-share rate's going up. Um, so we are slowly having those T-shares going down. We do expect that to happen over time, uh, which is going to make T-shares even more valuable in the future. That money printer is going to be very, very important. And hey, look, Hex sort of rewards people's decisions. So uh, if you are holding those T-shirts longer term, you're going to re get rewarded for that. Uh, but it's actually going to be even better than uh, what you're looking at it from today because the T-share route is going to likely go down with the share rate. Um, so yeah, we still want to obviously grow the community and get more stakers and all that good stuff and have that uh, cycling through too uh, decade after decade because obviously Hex is a long life uh, crypto for sure. Um all right, so we've got Jim Rack Crypto says, Richard hates any competition. It's understood. I like freedom as well. Yeah, me too, Jim Rack Crypto, for sure. Hashtag no drama channel says, Lies beneath. That's true. We are no drama channel and a family channel. We try to keep consistent with that. Uh, it can be testing at times. I agree with you, uh, but we try to do our best. We want to make it a place where everyone feels welcome as, as much as possible. 
Um, I've actually censored myself before uh, for breaking breaking the rules, only once or twice, but uh, nevertheless, you know, uh, we, we, we are all all part of that. All right, so cool. Uh, we all have different goals. No worries, is doing crypto. That's true. That's true. Uh, KBC says, cannot wait till Pulse Chain launch. Uh, your opinion says, anybody? Oh, of course, yeah, KBC. We're all we're all pretty amped for that. I'd like to see the the Pulse Chain testnet v three up before the end of the year. That would be mega bullish for Hex, uh, and uh, that'd be very exciting. Now, we got, if we see if you get Hex on the ETH chain, you're going to get a copy on Pulse Chain, and that's super bullish. And uh, we're expecting it to be probably uh, the best liquidity pair potentially, or at least one of the top ones, uh, as uh, some of the agencies of goodness come in. Uh, to set that up for us. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to that. Uh, Hexol says, no copy for Polyhex. So Bridge, uh, if you do get it on there, that's true. And uh, PLSD Thailand says, good morning from Thailand. Hey, PLSD, good to see you. Uh, we're going to talk about PLSD soon. Uh, Polyhex is uh, just locked. Uh, Exit on the bridge and get a copy on the admin keys. Yep. Uh, what else there? We're going to jump through some of these. Um, let's jump through some of these. Good to see Phil in the house. Good to see Phil. Uh, you'll briefly talk about Zen later on. Uh, Kevin says 1.3 cents. Don't uh, think Hex will go lower, says Kevin. Um, and uh, Hex also says, did you all hear Michael Saylor analogy on TV? The other day, he made no sense, just uh, like creepy stuff, like Kevin, uh, like sacrifice your Bitcoins in a boat accident, so his pumps. Yeah, okay, weird, that's weird. I have to go and watch that, Hex at all. Uh, hit the 50% burn mark last night, says PLSD. Yeah, we're going to talk about that soon, so uh, uh, we will get on to PLSD soon. Uh, 1.3 cents on hex would be beautiful to accumulate that is true uh what else there uh <laughs> what else there we got l back in man l, is... <laughs> well, l you gotta lighten up man you gotta lighten up that was uh, some negative serious stuff love you suit man just having fun i'm in a, a ball for hex sorry my hex skins i was negative silly that's all good l hey look i don't mind constructive stuff but when it gets a bit silly like bitcoin to zero i don't think that's gonna happen but i appreciate it l uh, I was a little bit surprised, to be honest. He still says, Michael Saylor, timestamp where he talks weird stuff. And most, okay, cool. I'll try and check that out later. Uh, living on crypto. G'day, Superman and Hex family from Dominican Republic. Good to see you living on crypto. Uh, maybe worth to play it only a few minutes. Yeah, I'll have to check it out before I play it because I've been stunned by a few copyrights lately because, uh, you know, we, this is what happens, isn't it? All right, so cool. Let me close down some of this stuff. Uh, we're going to uh, close down that and of course here we are hex Woohoo! let's get to the uh, main event and of course uh, hex here uh trying to find the bottom still uh we are in the accumulation what i call the accumulation zone it's kind of a distribution zone uh, but i call accumulation zone in fact people can accumulate for a pretty decent price and good volumes uh and uh here we are at the moment so uh 2.767 uh we have just started a new uh candle today on my chart remember it's my time that's utc time and it's just five minutes into the new candle here. Uh, so this is where we are at the moment. You can see that that new candle just started there. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had a bit of a hammer, which is uh, uh, a little bit uh, bullish. So uh, a little, uh, look, it's not quite a butterfly, but uh, some sort of doji hammer, hammer there. And uh, that was the high yesterday was 2.77. And the low was 2.6. So a really tight range there at the top. So that's kind of a bullish sign. And we just started a new day at 2.767. So we'll see how we get on there. Uh, we did get back down the two previous days. We got down to 2.62. So we got pretty low there. So just over a quarter of a penny. And we'll see how we get on from here at the moment. Uh, we had our poll results yesterday. And we covered those the last two days about what people thought in the community. Uh, and, of course, uh, hopefully we don't hit those. We had three and five uh, were pretty bearish. So hopefully we don't hit that. But, hey, look, uh, if Bitcoin hasn't found its bottom, uh, then this is definitely still in play for a potentially lower price. Um, so I would have to favor favor that uh, call at the stage. But at the moment, 2.767 uh, as well. So we'll see how we go. Let's have a look at some of the measures coming up here. Uh, we've got uh, PC, We've got the HEX. Uh, uh, what have we got here? The PC inflation results coming up here in a couple of days uh, on the 1st of December. So let's see where that is. That's uh, only uh, six days away. That's going to be a very important number. Uh, so we'll see what that does. Hopefully it's come down from 5.1. That'd be very bullish. Maybe down to 4.9 would be nice. Something like that would be cool. We've got the Hex third birthday coming up in a week. woo In a week, man. Hex third birthday. Uh, we're going to have a party or something on this channel. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then, of course, we'll be in our fourth year, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I can't understate how good that is for the Hex narrative uh, moving forward. Hex is a long life product, right? Uh, it's not one of these more speculative cryptos. It's a 
a really, a, a, you know, got that certificate of deposit narrative. That uh, is kind of a supercharged one, but uh, that's kind of where we are at the stage. Then, of course, we get into the Fed rate hike. Uh, that's 19 days away. So 19 days away, uh, if we get that 50 basis points, that's going to be very positive for the market. And then uh, it, if it's not 75 and it's 50 basis points uh, and we get a signal about uh, February being maybe 225 or just lower, lower amounts, uh, then that'd be pretty cool. And uh, we may get that Christmas rally. I've been talking about that for some, some time. I just have a feeling we might get a Christmas rally once we get through all this uh, tough stuff, as it were. And we might have, have that. Obviously, nothing's certain. I uh, just have a feeling about that. So feelings aren't crypto. They're not, they're not deliverable. Uh, but I just feel that once we get through these, uh, and of course, we have the right outcome at the moment. So far, it seems to be pivoting in the right direction. Uh, then that might be pretty bullish. Now, I was hoping, uh, not, not hoping, but because uh, I like high asset prices. I don't like low asset prices. Uh, but uh, I was hoping uh, that we would probably, uh, you know, dip down uh, to 14K or something and, and then, then spike up or dip down to 11K in, in a day or two and then spike up or something, you know. That's kind of wanting wanting to see uh, play out, but that hasn't happened as yet. So we will see how we get on there. Now, Pulse Chain v V3 testnet, man, I would really love that for the end of the year. Super bullish for Hex, man. You would The Hex chart might go crazy uh, with that because that wouldn't just be the BSC version. That'd be the ETH proof of stake version. That'd be super bullish. Uh, this is hopium, of course, uh, but I, you know, I don't see a lot of reason why it would take too long. The only thing I can see, unless they're doing other features, is really have the 0.25% uh, fee put into the code. So I'm not sure how difficult that is. Uh, apart from that, a lot of the parameters around S-load, they can just change. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. Obviously, we're going to have ch cheap pulse to begin with. Uh, the market has to price that up. Uh, we'll have relatively lower congestion at the beginning. Although I, I do think we're going to have good growth in, in uh, volumes on Pulse Chain when it does launch. And of course, then, of course, Pulse Chain Magnet sometime in the future uh, there as well. Um, so cool. I know some people are talking about March, April. Uh, you know, it's uh, just the time. Some people are talking about 2024. Uh, people are getting, you know, quite dismayed and getting out to the future. So we'll just have to wait. That's all we can do. Um, and uh, this, at this stage, Hex continues to just tick on. Uh, you, of course, you're earning that Hex per day. And we'll just have to ride through this bear market. And bear markets aren't much fun unless you're buying, right? Unless you're buying. Bear markets aren't that much fun. But what it does teach you is uh, to take profits when the market's going up. If you've got some liquid bags, obviously with Hex, you've got to get accumulate T-shares as well, uh, having a diversified portfolio, uh, good principles to follow. The other side, of course, is that uh, to have some dry powder. If the market does come back down, you can buy more volume and you can get more T-shares, things like that. Uh, so those are, are cool things. That's kind of where we're at the stage. So we're going to see how we lead into Christmas. Uh, and hopefully we'll get that nice little uh, Christmas rush. Uh, it'll be pretty cool. Imagine if we had the Christmas present of the test net. That'd be really, really cool. Uh, so let's hope. It's only hoping you're at the stage. Now, the last update that Richard gave us was uh, that development is going well. So that was pretty much it on the last update uh, that we've had from Richard. All right, so cool. Uh, let us see. Uh, he also teased about the November being the bottom of the bear. I don't think we've got there yet. Uh, so that timing's not quite right. He did say it was a could be, not a will be. And of course, it was subject to Fed pivot, but it looks like we are getting that Fed pivot, but just might be a few weeks later uh, than, you know, uh, maybe t 21 days, three weeks later uh, than the 21st of November, which is kind of where that pencil done. All right, we still haven't had a lot of that government PDC dropped either. So uh, those things still need to play out. All right, so uh, three hours ago on the Hex Whalebot, we had 15 million Hex uh, in staked after 31 days, just another one of these short stakers. And that's pretty much it at the stage uh, on the Whalebot. That was three hours ago. Now, some interesting stuff with the Hex uh, stakes. So we're looking at the supply side now, uh, the Hex stakes here. So let's have a look at to the end of, uh, let's go to the, maybe November, let's go a bit further, uh, 27th of November, that will do us. Uh, so this is the next year. Uh, we've got quite a few stakes coming up here to the end of the 30th. Uh, and quite a lot of these, are, I think we've got about 1.3 billion in here with all these stakes and uh, about 40, just under 40% of those uh, our origin account stakes. Um, so about 40% of the supply, about 1.3 billion. That's about 560 uh, uh, million hex uh, staked uh, our origin account ones. And these look like they're uh, quite long. Um, so based on uh, hex fire data here, uh, it gives us an idea of about 530 million hex. Uh, they seem to be staked out for uh, over a thousand days. So uh, right near the beginning of hex. Um, so they seem to be coming out here uh, based on this data. Uh, with uh, all these T-shares coming out. So uh, pretty cool. Uh, we've got the 25th, uh, 26th, 28th, 29th, a lot on the 30th here. Uh, so it looks like we've got, uh, what's that, 24, uh, just over 25,000 T-shares coming out uh, by the 30th of November. 
so that's pretty cool. That makes up about 40% of the stuff that's coming out before the end of November is the OA accounts. Um, so uh, that's kind of cool. Remember, the OA is kind of cool. Uh, it, I see it as a financial operator. Uh, it, uh, uh, because it's state, it helps to, uh, it, it keeps all that stuff. If it doesn't sell it, then it's like deflationary. Uh, and of course, you, that's the way I see the, the origin account. And of course, uh, also, um, when it does stake, it, it can regulate the APY in HEX as well. Uh, so there's some of the other features that it does. And of course, uh, with penalties, when other people have penalties, it gets 50% of the penalties, and that's deflationary too. Uh, so these are sort of deflationary me mechanisms. Uh, we don't talk about enough, I guess, uh, but that's just sort of playing out every day, uh, which is really, really cool. So uh, a couple of deflation measures, APY measure, uh, really is kind of like a, a regulator, uh, that, you know, unof unofficially. Uh, and of course, it's just my view, my opinions there. All right, so cool. That is a pretty cool coming out. Obviously, we have a big candle coming out there on the 1st of December as well. Uh, so it's pretty cool. I didn't actually re re repivot this, but uh, we'll look at that tomorrow. Uh, look for the December results. That's kind of cool. That's where we are at the moment. So let's jump out of all there. Uh, we've got the uh, Hedron uh, at the moment. We're going to jump to that. Hedron is at 2,076. And that's had a nice two, like last two days been good, like X as well. Um, and of course, we didn't get any of that parabolic rise up there as well um, into the big HSI auctions, but they're ticking away. And so we're going to get into all that too. Now, what have we had over the last 24 hours? We've had 74 buys on this main pair and 27 sells, a uh, quarter of a million dollars of volume at the moment. And we've been moving up there a little bit. So let's jump to it. We had over 71,000 T-shares up for grabs. And of course, over 6,700 HSIs as well. Uh, well over 550 million hex was up for grabs. We had 24 million on the first day, about three, uh, throughout, sorry, 24,000 T-shares the first day and about 1,000 uh, on the second, uh, sorry, 3,000 on the second day, et cetera. So let's go jump and have a look at some of the results at the moment. Uh, we've got the HEX HSIs up for grabs. We've still got 5,485 uh, all, all there uh, that you can pull into the auction house. Uh, you can start the auction. Uh, but of course, a lot of these are quite small, 100, 157, 110. I don't know who makes these. Uh, surely that cost them more in, in gas fees by a long shot. So I'm not sure what's quite going on there. But in any case, uh, there are tons of them um, and so forth. But let's go to the auction house. How many we've got in there? 51 at the moment. 51. Are you kidding me? Man, oh, man. Okay, we've got 51 in there. Let's have a look at this at the moment. This is the last we've seen. So 51. Uh, we've got some coming in here. How much? Let's have a look here. We're going to look for some bigger ones here. 436,000. And it's got 4.3 billion on it at the moment. Four hours to go. Uh, it's got no bo multiplier bonus there. Two million. Woohoo! So we had about 90 of these hex HSIs that were over a million. And here's one of them. Uh, and of course, 5555, five, 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 uh, this has no bonus in it, uh, but 21 billion Hedron in there. Uh, let me know in the chat if you managed to get some deals uh, with these Hex HSI auctions. Let me know in the chat. Uh, just say, uh, just say it. you don't have to give us the details. Just let us know if you got a good deal um, with uh, with the Hex stakes there. Uh, also, let us know if you've been recycling. Just uh, type in recycle or something like that or cycling. Uh, if you've been recycling Hex HSIs to the ICOSA contract, getting ICOSA. And, of course, that goes to the Icosa contract borrows that Hedron against it and so forth. So let us know if you've been doing that. I think that's uh, the play, or at least recycling it. Um, I probably Actually, it would have been borrowed the first time. So at least just let me know that you've, you've recycled those at the Icosa contract. What else there? We've got 250,000 there, 268,000, 435. So they've all got bids on them at the moment. 172, 300, 200, 300. Man, there's lots of good ones here, actually, uh, today. Uh, 108,000, 50,000. Uh, so there are some nice ones in here at the moment. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, what else? Uh, 820,000. Got 7.5 billion on that. Uh, lots of 7777s seven, 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 uh, in there as well. Uh, that's pretty much it there. So that is pretty much it. I think we got one on the next page. Uh, yep, uh, 455 X. Here we have. So it's got 327,000 Hedron on it. Uh, so get into it, folks. Let us know. Obviously, in about uh, 80, 83 days or something like that, we're going to have um, uh, a whole second round. It will be smaller. Uh, I think instead of having 24,000 on the, on the 13th like we did, we'll have probably around about 6,000 uh, in uh, 90 days from then, uh, which I can't remember exactly day what that is, but uh, that's coming up too. This is like a Dev Huey. Uh, Dev Huey's been dropping us some alpha. It says, did anyone notice their ownership of the WhatsApp pool ticked up? Uh, and I think he meant by 0.001%. Uh, uh, what else there? 31, uh, seven hours ago, 31.4 billion Hedron minted, 1.5 billion Hedron loaned, 57 billion Hedron burned so far today. With seven and a half hours to go, that was seven hours ago. Let's have a look at the mint burn. Uh, oh, the burn, so the burn was bigger today. That's really cool. So that's deflationary for Edron. That's good news. Let's jump over to 
Uh, seven hours ago, the zero zero, uh, this 0 0.0001 watts are just burned. It was bought on OpenSea for this amount. So, okay, I'm not quite sure what that is, but cringe. yeah, funny. Uh, what else there? You see, uh, I'll jump, jump to that. Is that Hot Pearl? Is Hot Pearl saying something there? I like the idea of someone out there stupidly burning some watts for this whole reason of watching Dev Huey lose his mind about it on Twitter. That's pretty funny. You see it as all part of their plan. Yeah, all part of the plan. That's pretty funny. So a bit of banter there. Uh, very cool. All right. Uh, that's pretty much it. Actually, I was going to jump over to his data side. I wanted to see what the... Uh, um, let me pull it up because I wanted to see what the uh, what's a return is at the moment. Hex model. Let's go to hex model, folks. Hexmodel.com. <laughs> let me... .com. Uh, real time hex model. Let me do this again. Hex model. Let's try it one more time. I'm mucking around there. That's not good. Not good for live streaming. Um, I'm sure that uh, Jim Rat Crypto knows what I'm talking about there. Uh, let's jump over to this. So cool. Let's go to the Watsers and have a look at the return at the moment. Uh, are people close to free carry? They're pretty close. Uh, let's have a look here. Woohoo! Uh, no, it hasn't really changed from yesterday yet. Maybe it's not updated. Nine and forty-nine. Uh, maybe it is updated. Nine and forty-nine. Uh, versus 1,000. What was it on the day before? Uh, 10, ten dollars. Okay, cool. Slowly getting there. Fifty dollars away. Fifty uh, well, fifty-one dollars approximately away from a free carry there on their Koza uh, Watsers, which is pretty cool uh, as well. We did see a few burns yesterday as well, which was nice. All right, so cool. That is pretty much it. We also got obviously Maximus. Uh, we haven't had a lot of stuff around them. Obviously, they continue to build out new products and things, no doubt. Uh, they are amazing at what they do. Uh, accumulating hex one hour ago. Accumulating hex T shares is the best way to invest in crypto. The best way to accumulate T-shares is with Maximus Staking Pools. That's pretty cool. We'll spread that around. That's pretty nice. That is about it from our Maximus team. We're going to get into the airdrops. Before we do, uh, let's get back in the chat and see who's around. Uh, I think we've got a few more people jumped in there. So uh, let's see who is here. Uh, uh, by the way, you can find all the airdrop stuff in our Discord uh, if you want to find the, the current airdrops and free claims and things like that are on at the moment. Uh, where did I get up to here? Uh, I think got up to there for sure. Uh, Hexola says the distribution zone is high, accumulation is low. Ideally, uh, some are preferred to buy the tops. Says Airdrop Hexola, that's true. Uh, Hexola, uh, what is the news about Poly not having a copy? I'm heard. Hex is Hex on Polygon. That is, oh yeah, Polygon. Yeah, I thought that's what you're talking about. Uh, Stooks and House there. How much percentage did X bump on the two weeks news of, uh, way back when? Um, I'm not sure, Sticky. I'm not sure. Uh, can't quite get the context of that, so you might have to rephrase that one. Uh, all ERC's 20s, unless Rich Hart and Devs exclude some, are getting PRC 20 copy. That's true. Um, KBC says Trump is speaking now in Florida. I think Trump will be president in 2024. There's yeah, still a bit of work to be done before that there, uh, the KBC, uh, but I'm positive about that. Hopefully we can get the mad people out of, out of the administration at the moment. That'd be a good news. Um... Uh, what else there? Wow, four years in crypto and work flawlessly. Talk about a solid money printer says living in crypto. I know it's coming up in four years. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? A beautiful thing. Uh, KBC says, I hope Hex hit one cent. Great buy, says KBC. Yeah, well, I guess there's probably quite a few limit orders in there at one cent. Uh, Hex Auto will let us know. Um, what else there? Uh, Hex on ETH fair is now under the all-time low of Hex on ETH. Uh, on ETH. Really? Oh, I'll have to go check that. I'll go check that later. Uh, after. I wish we might check that now. Um, now, ETHFIA seems to be take like 300, uh, 3,000 confirmation to get out though. Oh, really? Wow. I remember it. Uh, yeah, I knew, knew it was taking about two hours, but now it's like 3,000 confirmation. That's insane. Let's go have a look at uh, Hex. Before we get into airdrops and free claims, let's have a look at X on ETHFIA and ETHW. Um, so this is ETHW here. Uh, $478,000 dollars 24 hour volume. Uh, let's have a look at ETH uh, Hex. Must be here still somewhere. Uh, hex number 15, uh, 000 2279. It's holding up all right, actually. Uh, remember, the high though was uh, uh, four tenths of a penny, so it's way down from there. Uh, 2.85% down, only $1,400 liquidity on the main pair for $31,000 liquidity. So, small retail play on them. ETH fair, let's have a look at that. Uh, man, the volume is only 3,400. Man, it's really struggling, this chain, really struggling at the moment. Uh, and of course, uh, Hex is dominating still. Uh, but it's at 405265. Uh, but uh, let's have a look here. Uh, it is up 4% on 24 hours. But man, only $254 of trading volume in this main eat beer, eat fair pair. Uh, $3,200 in volume. So very tiny uh, there as well. 
Um, so Hexod, are you still playing over there? Maybe you're accumulating a large volume. So maybe Hexod is accumulating large volumes and let us know in the chat. All right, cool. Uh, what else? Uh, let me jump out. It took like 10 hours the other day. Are you kidding me? Wow, wow, 10 hours. That's crazy, man. Uh, walking dog and listening from the start says Sam. Hey, Sam, always a pleasure. And of course, awesome Hex Token channel member too. Um, 24 to 4 is crazy. Oak much sooner. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a long way away still. 11K in praise is KBC. That's true. Uh, let me jump through some of this. There's one huge wallet dumping, says Hexodle. I'm not sure what chain is that you're referring to. I missed that part. Uh, yeah, one wallet with over 200 million hex, I've noticed. Uh, Mega Dumper 227 million left on Ether Scan there. Okay, cool. A new wallet. Here's his XOG wallet. Cool. That's the same dumper, DO1. Oh, DO1, oh, yeah, it's been around for a while. Uh, he sent tons of hex to a new wallet to dump, right? It's been dumping for like two years. Uh, it's almost as big an account as like Overwatch, isn't it? Hexodle, something like that. Um, hello, Hex Token. Everybody could see Sandy Beach. Good to see in the house there. All right, so cool. Let's get into the airdrops now. You can find these links in the uh, Discord. Uh, we're up to, uh, we're going to talk about Zen briefly. Uh, we've got Zen here at the moment. It's had a bit of a rally. Uh, had a couple of them, right? Had this, uh, one of the 15 minutes. I have to go to daily chart. Uh, here we go. All right, so cool. Uh, let's have a look at this chart. This is on the daily. Uh, this is on the ETH chart. Now, obviously, there's a like on 10 chains now. Uh, but, of course, uh, they this was the announcement around the Zen NFTs. Uh, and, of course, uh, that was pre-run. So, uh, uh, by the... By the uh, rumor, sell the news, and of course now we've had another pump uh, because uh, the the news is the news is back. The news is back, uh, so it looks like it's getting closer and closer. Expecting a couple of weeks, right? Two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Two B two B A uh, TBA on that one. Uh, we had a nice little pump back here. I'm pretty happy with this because I did do some 98 day uh, months. So hopefully that plays out. Still a while to go though. Still a while to go. I'm not sure if it's going to quite land at the right time, but if it does, it will be a nice little nice little profits there uh obviously let's have a look here i did like i say i think of what i did, I did about uh a dozen or something of z of these i know that some people maybe like trey bond's done like hundreds right maybe in a thousand not sure how many but i know he's done hundreds uh and uh so forth but i think he's done them all long now he did he was trying all the short ones to try and make profits and i think he's gone mostly long now uh with his ones so cool uh there we are so uh i've got a mixed bag mine's a bit like a staking ladder thing so it's got mixed bag things there Anyway, so 9.305, uh, that is currently the price there. So just under four zeros one. Uh, so it's got five zeros in front at the moment. Let's have a look at Jack Levin at the moment. He's doing this. Now, a Zen NFT categories and classes, Ethereum. Uh, so this is what he's been doing here. This is what's coming up. This is what people are getting excited about. There is a big burn in here, right, to get these NFTs. Uh, there are different categories of NFTs. It's called Apex. This one's called Limited. And this one's called Collector. Uh, and, of course, uh, there's five classes within this. So class one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, there's uh, in the collector, there's uh, seven, uh, basically eight classes. There's uh, ruby, opal, topaz, emerald, aquamine, uh, sapphire, ameth amethyst, uh, and exterion. Exterion, that's a cool name. Anyway, so uh, this is kind of it. There's a different uh, burning on these first ones in the apex. Uh, it's 2BA, though. No, it doesn't tell you what that is. Also got token IDs, etc. Uh, rare NFTs uh, as well. So it's got lots of features there. We're not going to go through all of it here, uh, but that's definitely excited the market. And, of course, uh, that's bullish for, you know, burning mechanism, always bullish. The market likes that, uh, at least for a time. Uh, so that's critical. Cool. Obviously, these things will trade, uh, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so that was four hours ago. That was a one-page TLDR, uh, NFT categories of classes, uh, coming from Jack Levin there. So, obviously, uh, this was in the pipeline. And uh, so maybe who knows what other plans are in the future for this one. Uh, we'll see. This elevates this project, makes it a bit more uh, interesting. And, of course, I couldn't say this a possible project. Uh, it has a log function, so it's you know got to play out for quite a bit of time with inflation. Uh, but having a burning mechanism NFT like this, uh, kind of a collectible, uh, could be a good gamification for this and uh, reduce the supply as well. So a very nice little trick there. Uh, you launch with big uh, inflation, and then of course uh, you and it's free subject to the gas fees, and that kind of sets your floor of the gas price. And of course, gas fees move around. Imagine if gas gets back up into a congestion period. And then that's become a lot more valuable technically, don't they? Uh, so you got that to play out. So that's kind of where this is going at the moment. So cool, we'll be watching that. Let's jump out of there and, of course, have a look at Paul Pleb. Uh, Paul Pleb at the moment is uh, launched at an unfortunate time, but has managed to make a nice little rally back up here. Uh, and, of course, got down to as low as 2,300. 
It was currently at 4,172, uh, but did get up a little spike up to 129 the other day. Uh, so uh, Sorry, up to 5,300, which is under 29%. So it's a like, nice little gain in there. Uh, obviously, the volume's well, you know, got technical liquidity, which is probably not too big on this one, uh, but that's kind of cool. Uh, and finally, the weight token. Uh, weight token at the moment, let's full screen this. This is suddenly at uh, just over two-tenths of a penny, just under a quarter of a penny, actually. Uh, and it's just moving along there. Most people are waiting for Pulse Chain, and they get more and more as they wait. That's pretty much it. So that is pretty much it for the airdrops. You can find those links in our Discord under our Pulse Chain projects under airdrops and free claims. Uh, make sure you do your own investment due diligence, etc. There are different qualifying criteria for those tokens as well, uh, mostly around sacrifices and things like that, and maybe X stakes. All right, so cool. Uh, there's also, I didn't mention, but Texan token pay it forward and mechanisms still out there if you want to, uh, uh, you know, donate pretty much a million uh, Texan tokens uh, to other people, then you can participate with that. I would go over to Crypto Heartbeat uh, or, or contact KD uh, on his new Discord that he's running for Texan token um, as well, and uh, or get, you know, touch base with Ray to Riches and Crypto Heartbeat. This kind of way you get to find out more information about that. Let's jump over to Pulse Bitcoin, uh, which has kind of uh, been a lot of fun. I think it was you know trying to virtually represent uh, um, Bitcoin. And of course, it has ASICs uh, like ASIC miners that has ASIC tokens to represent that. Uh, Pulse Bitcoin, you mine Pulse Bitcoin. It's kind of fun. Uh, now, obviously, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, we got the Pulse Bitcoin there at $2.11. Uh, so it really hasn't flied. The, the actual Pulse Bitcoin has not, uh, obviously, launching not at the best time either in the current market situations, or the last two days have been a little bit better. Uh, we've got a little bit of a rise here. What did we drop down to yesterday? We got down to two dollars and two cents. We're currently at two dollars and eleven with the new candle. Uh, we'll see what how that goes. I'm expecting this to have a run at some stage, uh, and uh, that may start sooner or later. We will see. Uh, it hasn't had a run on this chart. Normally, you get a big start like this at the bottom at the beginning. You get this kind of liquidity, funky liquidity uh, start with the high candle, and of course, it looks like they were trying to get it started at thirty dollars, um, and of course, uh, they got sold down there and all the way down uh, to two dollars eleven at the moment. Maybe we'll get some little ho uh, hockey stick after that, right? It's what typically we see, uh, but when it will kick off, sometimes it typically can happen in the end of the first week. Uh, we'll be watching this one closely. Uh, some people talked about 9 to $10 being kind of fair value, uh, at least for the first 30 days. So uh, think about that. So that's kind of that one on that one. Asset miners at the moment, uh, dollar two for the asset token. And then, of course, the Pulse Dodge coin, the original mean coin, uh, that is at $5.05. And five. So it looks like the uh, ratio of one Pulse Dodge coin to uh, five assets is still relatively in play there uh, with a $1 to $5 ratio there. Uh, so cool. Let's go jump on and see how much has been minted with the transform. Uh, let's ha see how much is in there. We've got 3,049,000 Pulse Dodge coin being transformed into 14,992,000 asset tokens. Uh, pretty cool, right? 50%. Uh, Woohoo! And I think, I can't remember who said that earlier in the chat, but yeah, 50% has been reached of the burn. So 50% of Pulse Dodge coin has been burned. Amazing. And of course, Pulse Dodge coin only launched a little while ago. And what was it, the 20th of April uh, that you had to qualify? Um, so uh, yeah, it's 50% of the burn, gone burger. Uh, so that's pretty cool. There's only, what, 3 million left. 3 million left. Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, 3 million and 40,000, something like that. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and now people are taking the asset tokens and they're mining, uh, they're mining the P Pulse Bitcoin. And of course, the, they're in the first rate, 7.5% with a ASIC burning fee of 0.25. So ASIC is deflationary. Uh, there's 7,196 miners, 17 million ASIC uh, mining power, and of course the global ASIC burned 29,000, so a small fraction uh, there. Now the halving, uh, obviously up to 2,167 Pulse Bitcoin has been mined so far, uh, but only a certain amount of it's actually in circulating supply, and of course uh, it does seem to, once someone goes to mine, it does seem to like uh, forward calculate the amount that you're going to get over the next 30 days. I think that's how this works. Uh, because it just jumps up like that when uh, the last mining period finished. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, heading towards the 10.5 million before the first halvening, just like you have in Bitcoin, the first halvening there. So cool. I uh, look forward to that. Now, the asset token miner obviously finished, and these will be trading on a rareable and open sea. So rareable and open sea. Uh, I know that some of you have probably been hunting from some deals. Uh, I'm pretty sure that probably what happened to Watts has probably happened to these. I haven't actually got around to valuing them yet, um, but I'm sure that they're probably at a premium now. Because uh, they're now rare, right? They're rare. Uh, now, we what we did see surprised me. We saw we got 3,992 ATMs still in play. And, of course, once you cash them in for asset tokens, they're gone, Burger. Uh, we got uh, global active ATMs, 1.7 million points. And, of course, uh, the global average uh, points there, 557. 
Uh, now, the amount they've been redeemed uh, based on this is a massive 2.8 million, which surprised me. And that's at 1,092 ATMs uh, redeemed. And of course, uh, that's surprising me. That surprised me. But of course, you can uh, buy ATMs, the remaining ones, on here. So I don't know. That seems like a big play to me. Uh, I kind of rank the ATMs, uh, ASIC, uh, Pulse Bitcoin, and Pulse Dogecoin in that order. Uh, but let me know in the chat what you think about that. Um, all right, cool. Uh, let's see what any news from uh, a Pulse Bitcoin dude. Uh, founder of this. Uh, uh, let's have a look here. We've got any updates from him. This is the 23rd, three hours ago. Uh, nothing much there. I know that he has resp- replied to a few things in comments. Some of his replies are actually more insightful than the, the main comments that he does. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, he has got this uh, comment here. So he's got some some comments. He's responding to people in here. And pretty much, uh, I think there's more in store for this ecosystem, folks, going ahead. Uh, you must constantly, be constantly engaged in the system to maximize public Bitcoin rewards. This ensures the right people are getting the benefits. If gas fees are too expensive for you, and then you might be rewarded as often as someone that values it more. Hope this helps. Narratives from Pulse Bitcoin are flexible. So uh, I think there's actually a bit more in there. Uh, around this comment so you can definitely check that out uh he's got some nice cool answers in here as well so definitely check that out i didn't quite find the beginning of that but there we are all right so cool that is pulse bitcoin we'll be watching that pretty closely uh, moving ahead it's uh i love this stuff it's kind of experimental uh and of course uh it is uh, you know around that, that bitcoin narrative as well i think that's kind of cool um so uh let's jump away from that uh we're going to get into bnb pot this is our speculative play uh before we do that though let's get into the chat and catch up we're up to an hour and two minutes on the live stream, heading up towards the X daily stats. That's coming up soon too, folks. Uh, so uh, look forward to that. Uh, we all like to be paid hex payouts. Um, uh, let's get back in here. I think we got up to uh, Sandy Beach had arrived. Yep. Uh, I gave a history lesson today on Thanksgiving. Nice one, Sandy Beach. Yeah, people need to be educated, that's for sure. Uh, not this revisionary rubbish that people are trying to spread around. Uh, from what I've read, they didn't even eat the, what, the something, uh, they, the real Thanksgiving day. Uh, let me jump through some of that. Uh, uh, Pulse Dodge Coin. Woohoo! Yeah, again, excited about the PLSD. Hey, Brizzle, Brizz is in the house. Hey, Briz. Hey, everybody. Good to see Briz. Briz is coming for the X Daily Stats. He comes in, he can smell it. He can smell the X Daily Stats coming up. And that's all, Briz. He can smell it. Um, all right, we've got Brennan as well. Hey, Briz. Uh, what else there? We've got a couple of comments. Uh, Sandy says, maybe next year I'll invite people over who don't have family for Thanksgiving. That's really nice, Sandy Beach. Really nice. Uh, what else? Uh, PLSD says, yes, the assets are the money printers. They are indeed in the Pulse Bitcoin there. Hex Giving says, Briz, I like that. Hex Giving, that's a good one. Actually, that's a good thing. Hex Giving. I have a bunch of assets ready for my two-week miner that needs help, says Bob Wells. Uh, a Pulse Dodge Coin says, just uh, in from Hex Info, found a PLSD. Looks like maybe we can soon use the ASIC money minters to mine a poly, uh, Pulse Litecoin. All these will be copied on uh, to copied onto Pulse Chain. Plus, everything seems to have dollar value. Yes, true. That's going to be nice. Yeah, that's great news. Thanks for this PLSD. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, says J Man, and uh, Hex Giving. I like that, says uh, uh, Sandy Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hex Otis says more like not giving my Hex. Yeah, that's funny too. Uh, 100% stake, that's the way to go. Uh, J Man and House, there nice. Uh, what else there? Um, uh, uh, Bob Wells says that's awesome about Pulse. Uh, was it Pulse Litecoin? I think there will be more options in the future. Yeah, I don't think his gamification's finished. He's uh, seems to be quite good at it, and his uh, branding seems to be pretty good too. Uh, Hex Giving is daily, it is when you got T shares, it's definitely ga- daily as well. <laughs> All right, so here we are, BNBP. This is our speculative play. And, of course, uh, I've done a couple of videos on the gamification. You can check that out on this channel. Uh, and, of course, uh, this is pretty cool. We're looking at this from the stakers' point of view. Obviously, this is a crypto casino. It's the world's first peer-to-peer uh, crypto casino. So it's relatively new technology in crypto. So we like that, too. And uh, not relatively. It is basically new technology. And, of course, uh, we're watching that play out. Now, obviously, they want to launch on Pulse Chain, But, of course, uh, Pulse Chain is not here. So they've launched on BSC, which is great. Uh, we get three cool things around it. We get the wealth effect, a bigger community, and test all the products, get them up and running. So it's a pretty cool. And then go and copy those over to Pulse Chain. And of course, all the sacrifices uh, get the benefit of that too. Now, there's also the first sacrifice project that's launched, which is pretty bullish and uh, has been a stellar performer from my point of view. Uh, and of course, uh, we're going to watch this uh, play out over the next uh, year or two. And uh, it's going to be fun to see. So at the moment, the price is $11.23. Uh, so it's kind of sitting in pretty nice tail here at the moment. 
uh, has been as high up up as high as uh, twenty eight dollars and eleven, uh, and of course uh, it got down recently uh, to a low of around about seven dollars twenty six. Uh, so there's volatility in the price, but you got to remember this is a sacrifice project. So we had sacrifice people selling, we have people playing games selling, we have people buying though too. Uh, so there is a, a redistribution uh, of this as well. So uh, let's have a look here at the actual BNBP at the moment. So we've got the jackpot playing. And uh, we've got the games going. What game are we up to? We're up to number 8,473 on the jackpot, which is the first game to launch. And, of course, relatively unique game too. Uh, that is pretty cool. Um, and uh, I think they have lowered the BNBP that you can actually win now, uh, which is going to extend out the participation uh, 100,000 dot. 100,000 BNBP distribution. Uh, what am I trying to say? 100,000 BNBP. Uh, the problem is there's four letters BNBP uh, distribution phase there for the launch. Uh, so cool. Uh, we're waiting for Powerball. Uh, apparently, this is going to be delayed slightly because it's going to be zooped up even more. So we're looking forward to that. And then roulette's coming down the uh, pipeline very, very soon, too. Uh, so this is going to really uh, amplify the potential earning, uh, volume earnings for this platform. It's going to go boom, 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 boom. And uh, we're looking forward to that. And of course, in the future, other games so cool now what we like about it, obviously we get to buy a bnbp or if you sacrifice you got bnbp and you can stake it and of course the staking's looking pretty good we're up to 75.93 percent is staked which is pretty stellar that does include the hundred thousand participation wallet though so you would have to deduct that but it doesn't include the team's wallet which is about sixty one thousand, i think uh, as well so you could add that on there too uh so that's kind of cool uh, and what else? I think uh, we've got the airdrop at the moment, 4,200 in the reward pool for the airdrop. Uh, so that's going to be a BP, that is. Uh, lottery is at 40 uh, as, as well. And I think they've given out, what, three of those, maybe? Three weekly lotteries have been won, something like that, maybe. I think it's three, maybe four, possibly. How long has it been? I can't remember. Uh, but uh, what does the chart tell us? Yeah, it must have been a few now. Uh, how many days are we in here? Um, let's have a look here. So we're in about uh, 54. So maybe maybe it's been a lot more than that. So uh, maybe it's been seven weeks, seven weeks of payouts. Maybe it's been seven of them. All right, so cool. Uh, we've got uh, burn here, 56 is the burn, and that's been burning slowly and surely, been burning. Of course, I think that happens daily. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so this going, it's going on really nice. Now, the participation uh, wallet is now 63,833 has been won or referrals. Remember, it's 100,000. Now, the, they won't be paid out until the end. So this is really the only, uh, what I see is the hurdle left. And the project, all the bullish stuff is, is just going to be playing out with the new products and so forth. So looking forward to that and the burn and all the other gamifications that are out there. So it's pretty cool. All right, so cool. That is pretty much happening there. And uh, was I going to say much more about that? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much, I think we're up to the Hex Daily Stats. We're up to an hour and eight minutes. So we're doing well. Uh, we've got Hex at the moment. Let's go to BZC. BZC at 16,544. Ether at 1180. A BNB at 296. BNB performing particularly well there. Uh, we've got Hex at the moment at uh, 2.75 cents. Uh, definitely nice volumes there for picking up at this price. And we've got Hedron there at uh, 2,034. Uh, let's jump over to Hex Daily Stats. I think we've got the days, hot days. Yeah, we have. Uh, day 1,087, the 23rd of November, hot off the press. Uh, the price was stamped at 2.759, which is pretty similar to now, uh, up slightly 0 .04, uh, 0 .0 0 0.04, I should say. Now, uh, the payout per T-share, 6.185, so not a lot of penalties today. Uh, the share uh, share price there, $694, a dot day in the share rate, and, of course, that's up to $25,137. Uh, so that's just slowly tinkering up there. Now, I suspect this will grow quite a lot over the next uh, couple of days is my suspicion that we'll get that uh, growing, especially with the uh, potentially with the Origin account there coming out. The average stake length there, 6.7 years. Uh, we've got the APY, which is the yield and emergency intake penalty is 37.59%. Uh, liquidity pool is down slightly from yesterday at 30, uh, 357 million uh, there. And of course, 9.6 million USDC in the pool uh, and uh, 1,435 Ethereum. So that's where we are at the moment. Now, HEX is easy to understand. If you're new to HEX, you can check, check out HEX.com in the video description. Uh, we've got a reward pool with inflation and penalties in it. And we've got T-shares, uh, which is the ownership pool. And that uh, stands for trillions of shares. So if we have a change in the reward pool or the ownership pool, then the HEX payout per T-share changes every day. So T-shares are what people are after in HEX, and it's kind of what we call our money printer, inverted commas there. Uh, and it basically just means that you get a share of the reward pool uh, and a paid out in HEX. Uh, the, obviously, the price of HEX can move around. As we see, it's had a, a pretty long bull, uh, bear market, uh, 430 days, uh, 432 days now uh, since the all-time high, of around about 52 cents, give or take. Uh, depends what chart you're looking at. Uh, but 52 cents approximately. Um, so obviously a good zone there. 
uh, and I think it's been as low as about 95.6% uh, pullback. So it's pretty pretty strong pullback there, but a good accumulation zone if you're looking to pick up large volumes of hex. Once again, make sure you do your own investment diligence. Uh, nothing on this channel is investment advice. So that's kind of we're uh, up 1,879 T-shares in the ownership pool. Uh, we're sitting under we're sitting under 10.4 million at the moment, and this is kind of a cool sign, right? So if you're holding those T-shares, uh, they do seem to be getting slightly rarer, right? They seem to be slightly rarer. We're still growing, uh, but that T-share rate's going up, and the T-share pool is going down. And this has kind of been projected uh, at many times. So uh, cool. Uh, hopefully, we'll get from Crypto Spa Book uh, guys uh, at the beginning of next year uh, a new prediction. Uh, they do that typically annually. Uh, so we look forward to that. I think maybe January, somewhere like that. We'll, we'll have a look. Uh, it's going to be cool. All right, so cool. Uh, let's jump over to the stake percentage of coins. 9.69% of X is staked at the moment. Uh, we've got a very modest penalties today. Uh, just over a quarter of a million in hex and penalties. Uh, that means a lot of people are keeping their responsibilities right. So that's kind of cool. Uh, now, the growth of hex still continuing to grow. Uh, wallets are up 68. Uh, stakers are up 122. Uh, and, of course, uh, sorry, current hold stakers are up 104 today. A really nice, up to 114,237. Uh, probably a couple of key drivers there. Hex, uh, Hex HSIs, uh, uh, the, the price itself being a cheaper entry for people, uh, and maybe a few other things people promoting and things like that. Uh, lots of uh, drama on the streets, uh, paying a little bit of attention there as well, maybe. Uh, so cool. Uh, we've got the total holders up 248 to 512,162. That is day 187. And of course, 1,087. We're up to day 1,088 today. 43 minutes into it, and of course, I've already got uh, a hex payouts around about 6.169 at the moment. And of course, we're getting so close to day 1095. Uh, we're only a week away from hex's third birthday, and after that, we will be in you get it the fourth year of hex, which is a beautiful thing. And of course, uh, this is a long life asset, you know, people are staking out as long as 15.2 years or 5,555 days. And of course, we have people we're getting up to three years, that means we could potentially have some people that are stay, you know. Uh, 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 that uh, uh, from the beginning is now the project is basically uh, out to 18, uh, 18 years. So it's pretty crazy like that, 18.2 years. So uh, pretty insane if you think about it like that. And it's just going to keep uh, pushing out. Uh, so it's going to be fun to see. All right, so cool. That is the Hex Daily Stats. And uh, we're up to an hour and 12 minutes, which is pretty good. I think we're going to leave it on the Hex price. I'm going to get into the chat there. We're going to get rid of some of the overlays. And uh, that's where we are at the moment. So cool. Let's see who else has arrived. Uh, probably got a few more people there. We've got some spam in the chat, but let's finish our poll. Our poll at the moment is uh, 173 votes. Not too bad. Let's end the poll and see what the results are. Uh, will Fed pivot in December 2022? Uh, drop to 50 basis points because we've had four 75 basis points in a row. Uh, yes, crypto bottom is still coming. Uh, yes, it will pivot in December, but crypto bottom is still coming 58%. I think that's probably where I sit too. Um, no pivot February 23 crypto pain still 21% uh, so maybe we get 75 basis points in December certainly one in four people are the, in the Fed poll uh, agree with you guys who voted that um, and of course more pain crypto pain still uh, so one in five seeing that uh, so it's probably a reasonable reasonable outcome in the poll actually uh, yes uh, crypto bottom is in uh, yay 10% so one in 10 pretty optimistic there I'm not quite sure. I think we're there, but, uh, you know, it's uh, nice to think so. The market's shocked us. Uh, it might play out. No, a fi a pi uh, pivot February 23, uh, crypto rise then. So uh, even with the pivot uh, in the first one, people are still expecting more pain into next year after February. Uh, but 8%, uh, 1 in 10 people pretty much uh, saying that uh, crypto will rise only in February after we pivot properly. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that we're going to get reduction in interest rates. And, of course, that's the next big thing, how long we hold them. And then, of course, maybe the market really rallies and we get the reduction in interest rates. Uh, that would certainly rally for a short period of time. But like I said, earnings call. Uh, if the real economy gets really hit by the Fed rates and, of course, the earnings start really uh, uh, diving uh, and those multiple uh, valuations start falling, uh, then, you know, uh, you could see, like any this year, you could see things uh, really start tanking in the stock market. And how that plays into you know, crypto, uh, we'll see. That's kind of cool, Paul. Thanks for everyone in voting there. We're coming up to an hour and 15 minutes, which is pretty good. Uh, let's get into some more comments before I wrap up. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm meant to, it's been a lot of comments since I, I think I got up to X giving. I like that. Yeah, me too. Uh, X giving is daily. We got up to that. Um, I'm ready for a Hexmas miracle. Yeah, we're definitely looking for that Christmas Hexmas miracle there. I definitely think it's possible uh, once we get there through the 14th of uh, December. 
just be aware I'm not the best cook in the house here, Sandy Beach, for Thanksgiving. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, J Man says pop projects are going to the moon when the Bulls run, says J Man. And more games coming soon for Pulse BNB pot. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be doing pretty well. Uh, that's what I want to do is look at the burn. We'll do that tomorrow. Look at the burn of a BNBP tomorrow. Um, uh, <laughs> Hex Otto says, give me liberty. Oh, give me liberty or give me Hex. I agree with you, Hex Otto. And it says, uh, Briz, I says, I expect more people to gamble in a bull market. Lol, says Briz. That's true too. Uh, Jamie says, you're so Hexy. Uh, agreed, Briz, says Sandy Beach. Uh, what else there? Uh, Exile says, no reason to bet with anything but the BNBP because it's uh, at a 3x discount, says Exile. Uh, J-Man says, less than 1 million dollars to buy. It won't take much to bump odds, says J-Man. Uh, someone won over $1,000 with $6 year yesterday. Wow. I have seen a cut. There's been a couple of those. Uh, a couple of those for sure. Um, I wonder what the best one's been, like the biggest one's been. I, I'm not sure what, that's, what that one is. Um, Michael Racine says, Sandy, can I reserve a plate Thanksgiving next year? Uh, the monthly airdrop has six more days to go. Yeah, six more days to go to the monthly airdrop for BMP. Uh, next year may still be a BSC six huddle. Uh, may still be a bear next year. Man, that's true. Uh, but we may have some little rallies in there too. Uh, hopefully, Pulse Chain will uh, be the bull. Uh, that's what we want there, X huddle. Pulse Chain bull. Pulse Chain may make it bull for us though. Yeah, there we are. You front run me on that one, X huddle. Uh, doing quick maths, BNBP is doing 6% APY right now for the stakers, yeah, with the first product out and a heavy amount of staking, yeah. Um, uh, higher yield with more betting, yep, yeah, and the bull market maybe, yep. Yeah. Uh, when all the games are up and running and all five chains are up and running, yeah, moon, moon, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely one that's going to ramp up over time and uh, once you get through that participation wallet, uh, that's going to uh, help settle things down. Uh, when Pulse Search is DB, one day closer, DB, one day closer. That's all I've got for you at the moment. More patience. Uh, of course, you're getting weight tokens uh, while you wait. You're getting weight tokens while you wait. Uh, Chess Suit Message, Brennan, are you welcome? All right, so cool. Let's play it out. One hour and 70 minutes. I think it's a good time. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's show. Uh, and of course, uh, yeah, check out hex.com. Check out Pulse Chain. Uh, it is coming eventually later, sooner than later. And of course, uh, don't forget, uh, there's lots of fun other uh, projects out there at the moment uh, to keep you entertained. Are you not entertained? And, of course, we like to cover some entertainment stuff as well. Crypto is a lot of fun. As I say, we are a maxi channel, but we do like to talk about some fun projects out there as well. And we try to get that balance right. That's uh, kind of the fun thing there. Uh, you also want to chase more probable projects than possible projects um, because you want to have a good probability that you're making the right decision with your valuable uh, valuable portfolio. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, uh, let me get into uh, – let's play something fun out on the way out. Uh, what should I play today? I'm going to play something different today. Let me find out what I'm going to play for the music. Uh, I forgot uh, anything here. Let me have a look here. Uh, I think that's fun enough. Let's play this one. This is always fun to see. All right, take care, everybody. Bye for now. Peace out. I'll see you in Discord. Woohoo! Subscribe, like, share, hit the bell.
This is the opportunity of a lifetime. Yes, every scammer in the world is gonna tell you something similar, but in this case, you are actually going to have regret. Remember all the haters? All the haters that told you that I was a scammer and Hex was a scam? I got bad news for the haters. We're making new all-time highs where everything else is getting wrecked. Price is up four or 5,000 fold in 600 days. I've made enough money in the last week that I could buy a house in cash. I would never have to work another day in my life. I'm here to shell. I want to change the world. And I can only do that if people participate. The only thing that matters in this world is goods and services. Everything else is accounting. And our made up imaginary internet money is better than the government's made up imaginary internet money. Both of them are only backed by the shared fiction of the humans believing that they have value. If Hex is a religion, then Richard is God. I'm in crypto for glory. I want to have the best cryptocurrency that's ever existed. I want to have the best performing asset that's ever existed. And so I think of blockchain as like the internet. In the 90s, everyone thought the internet was just for email. <laughs> I bought some this morning. They're imaginary quarters. Like, it's like playing Monopoly. I put it all in. I put, I mean, I went. Like, all of what? <laughs> all of our house money. This is a force that is not going to go away. The cryptocurrency is not going away. And at some point, the people that you met that you thought were crazy loon birds, they're gonna be in the 1%, and they're gonna be the people that own half of everything. Tether crashing, I, I will say you, nev you never rule anything out these days, yeah. but I'm a lot more confident in Tether than almost any other project. You know, a lot of the other coins and projects and chains out there that are gonna crack from this, Tether's probably not one. What about Hex? <laughs> What about Hex? I'll, I'll tell you this. This is what I'll tell you about Hex. I'm, look, you guys know we've always been neutral on Hex here on the channel. Uh, so many people that called out Richard Harden and said he's a scammer. So many people. Alex Mashinsky. I don't know if SBF did. But you, how many people have gone down and have actually turned out to be scammers that were calling Richard Harden a scammer the whole time? He, he's managed to last a long time in this business compared to a lot of these other people that he'd been calling out scammers. Did you see the Bengals guys? The Bengals guy cry? No. Oh, that doesn't sound. Yeah, he, like I think it was yesterday. Oh, he, he cried on air. Like, was it over what? Well, Richard Hart says because of his tweet. Oh, Richard Hart says it was because he basically tweeted hello because I, I I'm I don't know who it was that they were promoting. Maybe it was BlockFi. I mean, look at Peter McCormick. He was all over BlockFi, right? Yeah. A lot of people were. A lot of people were. And, and I, look, I hold nothing against these people for this stuff. Yeah. But the Bengals guy was like, it's not. It wasn't. Uh, Ryan John Adams, my favorite, uh, you know, glasses wearing best friend. Yeah. Uh, it was David, uh, David Hoffman. David Hoffman. Because he's just so sad over the fact, like, I feel like you can't like, trust anybody. Can't trust anything. Yeah. No, can't it trust is. Anybody. And it I understand is the sentiment. Sad. Yeah. You know, and, and they're another, you know, they called out Richard Hart for this, that, and this, and that. Peter McCormick's done it, this, that, this, that. But yet they were promoting things that turned out to be scams before anything's happened to Richard Hart. So um, I'm just, this is what I'm saying. People in glass houses don't throw stones. You know, I, I don't, you know, I know Richard. I like him. We went to a concert together. You know, I like him as a person. I like. Uh, We're not like investing hex. As well, can you store value better than Bitcoin does? What does Bitcoin do? You can buy it, you can sell it, and you can transfer it, and that's it. Well, what if you want to earn money on your Bitcoin? What if you want to lend your Bitcoin out? Well, now you've got to give your Bitcoin to a trusted third party who's going to screw you or get hacked or not give you your funds for some reason, right? So for instance, uh, there's exchanges where uh, you can send your Bitcoin and lend them out to people to short the price. And there's a floating rate that changes on how much profit you can get from doing that. But every once in a while, those places get hacked and then you don't get your money back. So if we have programmable money, well, what should be the first thing we program? Interest. So instead of giving your coins to a centralized third party to hope to make profit, you can just give your coins to the smart contract that minted them. And then the same contract that allowed the coins to exist in the first place is the same contract that will pay you your interest for locking your coins. So I invented it. You're calling it a blockchain CD. Yeah. 
but it monetizes not. the time value of money. It's the only cryptocurrency no, I'm aware of that no, pays you man, more for locking look, longer. It's it's just some like tenth grade economics project. Hexcoin is one thousand percent a scam coin. Why don't we talk about how scams work and then hope that people don't fall for them? Isn't that a good, useful thing? I, I, I think we should entirely focus on, not, <laughs> on you being a scammer, and I don't want to go out of that window of thing. It's just the entire thing. I'm going to say, you're a scammer. This is a scam. You're scamming people. I mean, uh -huh. the fact is, Kieran is one of your developers who came on the show yes. and said some pretty damning things that raise a lot yes, of Yes, and I don't mind that. I, I don't mind that at all. I, I hope that he continues to do so that. So you have nothing to, to say about, you know, the over 50% of coins. It's all true. Being I, say it on t I say it all day, every day. And I actually want to help all those people. No, you're not. You're scamming people. Okay, so let's go over it. Let's go over yeah. it. But yeah. I think okay. How, how, how does everyone win? Let, let's just, for basic questions, how does right. everyone win? Well, well, first, first, why don't we just attack the easy things, right? So the website says that Hex is designed to go up over 10,000 X in two and a half years. You know, scammy projects trying to overtake Bitcoin. You're watching one of them written on the shirt right there uh, of Richard Hart. Uh, a mega, mega scam. And obviously after hearing your responses, it's obvious to me that it is a scam. A scammer is someone who says to you that they're going to do one thing, you give them your money, and they do something completely different. They tell you that they're going to deliver something, and then they run away with your money, or they steal the money. Richard Hart didn't do that. Richard Hart is very transparent. He said, Hex does exactly what it's supposed to do. You deposit Hex, through this mechanism, it gets burnt, you earn more Hex, you earn this interest in Hex, and it does what it's supposed to do. It's had many security audits, contract audits, and whatever else. It's passed every single one of them. It's never, ever been hacked. And every single user that's ever bought Hex so far has made money, or most users that have bought and staked Hex have made money. That's not a scam. To those of you following the crypto markets, especially the altcoin markets, you may be familiar with Hex, one of the fastest rising cryptocurrencies out there, along with uh, Richard Hart, who is a very enigmatic figure online, founder of Hex. Richard joins us today to talk about this coin and his upcoming projects. Welcome to the show, Richard. Thanks for having me, it's a pleasure. But Richard, what's happening with you these days? Well, we just raised uh, $25 million plus for medical research. And, uh, you know, the founder of that charity, I had volunteered for that charity back in 2006 in Cambridge in person. And then I never got around to doing more for him. And it's the only thing that matters is saving lives and, and healing people. It's the highest and best cause any of us could have. And not enough people work on it. You know, you go out into the street, you close your eyes, you just point at somebody, guarantee they're not a doctor, guarantee they're not a researcher. All of humankind is focused on everything except saving our own lives. So somebody's got to fix it. Somebody's got to, to do better. You know, my grandparents died. I never did anything for them. Parents are on their way out, probably. And I'm next. As you said, I'm a huge guest. It's not good for your health, <laughs> you know? So <clears throat> it's someone has to, to put the money in. And it's been awesome that the cryptocurrency community has donated 25 million yeah. so far. Yeah, so this guy, this guy Richard Hart, um, who's been a fan of ours for like 15 years, volunteered at a couple of my conferences like 10 or 15 years ago, not heard from him for literally, I'm going to say, nearly a decade. Yeah. Suddenly he comes along and says, right, um, I've decided now's the right time for me to help you. But he doesn't do what other people like, you know, Vitalik Buterin have done. Yeah. He doesn't come and say, like, here's a check. Um, he says, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to incentivize other people to send you money. And he's <laughs> got a lot of other people. Richard Hart, seems, Richard Hart seems to be, I, I mean, I don't understand the crypto world at all, okay? Though me. they very much seem to understand me. I have a, we have a huge fan base in the crypto community. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so Richard, you know, I had no idea what he'd been doing. He seems to be a rather polarizing figure. There seems to be people who really disapprove of him. But, um, honestly, I don't quite care right now because... <laughs> um, um, be, be, because he's, you know, he's done this enormous thing for us. And actually, to be perfectly honest, I'm not even sure that the disapproval is all that deep. 
because I wrote to Vitalik Buterin, the guy who created Ethereum and who has been a huge supporter of ours for a few years now, um, and told him what was going on. And he said, oh, that's very interesting. I mean, you know, Richard has been, you know, marketing his currency in a questionable way. I don't know any of the details, right? Um, but this, I mean, his words were, this definitely improves my opinion of Richard. And if it's good enough for Vitalik, it's good enough for anybody. And written right there on a the website, it says, you must have no expectation of profit from the work of others. And with continued interest of cryptocurrency, El Salvador now becomes the very first country to adopt Bitcoin as its official currency. The country now holds 400 Bitcoin worth about $20 million. Other cryptocurrencies continue to make news as well, such as Ethereum, Doge, and Hex, which is the best performing cryptocurrency for 2020 and 2021. And that's three things that you need to know for this morning.